Good morning, fifth graders. This is Mrs. Fellinger. I'm here today to present a lesson on writing expressions with word problems. Last week, you talked about order of operation, and this week, you've been talking about writing expressions and interpreting expressions. We're just taking it one step further where we're going to write an expression based on a word problem. You do this all the time. You probably don't realize it but we're going to do it in one step. In other words, we're just going to have one expression for our word problem. Now, we don't even have to solve the problem. All we're doing is writing the expression. Let's take a look at one. An arrangement of flowers contains 10 roses, four tulips, and seven lilies. Write an expression to show the total number of flowers in the arrangement. Now, if you look at the word total, I'm going to highlight it here for you, you should know that's one of the key words that you've been talking about in the past couple of weeks, and total tells us that we should add. So we're going to find the total of the flowers. We're going to take the 10 roses, the four tulips, and the seven lilies, and we're going to write an expression to show that we would add them together. Remember, an expression does not have an equal sign or an answer after it. So our expression would simply look like 10 plus 4 plus 7. All right, we're going to take that same arrangement of flowers, the 10 roses, 4 tulips, and 7 lilies, but we're going to step it up a little this time. Now, Mrs. Smith ordered 12 of these arrangements for her daughter's wedding. Write an expression to show how many flowers the florist needs to order to make the flower arrangements. So we know that we have to figure out the total number of flowers first. So we know that 10 plus 4 plus 7 gives us the total for one arrangement. However, Mrs. Smith needs 12 of these arrangements. So we have to multiply the sum of 10 and 4 and 7 by 12. So I'm going to put the 12 over here and the times. So now I have 12 times 10 plus 4 plus 7. Think back to last week in order of operation. If you think back, what do we need to do? We need to put parentheses around 10 and four and seven. If we don't do that, we would multiply 12 times 10, and then we would add four and seven to 120. That's not how this works. So we have to have the parentheses to show that we do that first, and then we can multiply 12 times the sum of 10, four, and seven. Now, the way I have it written is perfectly fine. However, I can erase this times sign, and I'm going to move my 12 over right next to my parentheses. That means the same thing as 12 times the sum of 10 plus 4 plus 7. Let's try another one. Susan collects seashells. She had 36 shells before she went on vacation. While on vacation, she found several more shells to add to her collection. Now she has 45 shells in her collection. Write an expression to show how many shells Susan found while on vacation. Let's look at the information here. We know that she had 36 before she went on vacation. When she got back from vacation, she had 45 shells. Hmm. We need to figure out how many shells she found while on vacation. So, if I think about the four basic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, I know that if I add those two numbers, I'm going to get a number bigger than the total number of shells she has in her collection. So that doesn't work. If I multiply them, I'm going to get an even bigger number than if I added them. 
And if I would divide, I'd get a very small number. The only operation left is subtraction. So I want to start with the 45 shells she now has in her collection, and I want to subtract the 36 she had before she went on vacation. This expression will show me how many shells Susan collected while on vacation. Now I'd like you to try one. Let's look at the problem. Casey has nine pieces of candy. Jeff gives him seven more. Casey gives five of his candies to his cousin. Write an expression to show how many candies Casey has now. I'd like you to stop the video, try and write the expression, and when you're finished writing the expression, start the video back up for my explanation. Okay, so we know that Casey started with nine pieces of candy, and we know that Jeff gave him seven more. So more tells us we're going to add that seven right to the nine. That will give us the total number of candies that Casey had after Jeff gave him seven. However, Casey was kind enough to give five of his candies to his cousin. So we need to take five away. So we're going to subtract five. And this is what our expression should look like. Now, you might say, do we need parentheses? Well, what we would do first in this situation is we would add to find the total number he had before he gave his cousin any. And we know that with order of operation, we move left to right when it's addition and subtraction. So we don't need parentheses in this problem. It should look just as it is. We're getting a little more complex now. Let's try this one. Megan has four boxes of donuts. Each box contains three powdered donuts, four glazed donuts, and five chocolate donuts. She wants to divide the donuts equally among six people. Write an expression to show how many donuts each person will receive. So let's think about this. We first need to know how many donuts are in each box. And in order to do that, we need to look at the three powdered, the four glazed, and the five chocolate. We need to find the total of that. So I would add three plus four plus five. But Megan has four boxes of these donuts. So if I add three and four and five, I get 12. What do I need to do with 12? I need to multiply it by the number of boxes she has. She has four boxes. So I'm going to put parentheses around three and four and five because I need to add those first. And then I am going to put a four in the front that tells me to multiply them. Another step to this problem would be to now divide the donuts equally among six people. So I can simply add divide a division sign, divide by six. Think about order of operation. This is actually just one term. There's no addition or subtraction sign except the addition signs inside the parentheses. So we know we do parentheses first. And then we do multiplication division left to right. So this is exactly how we would do this problem. We would write this expression. Here's our last problem. Jane babysits for four hours on Saturday and three hours on Sunday. She makes $6 an hour. She owes her mother $14. Write an expression to show how much money Jane will have after she pays her mother. I want you to stop the video, try your best to write the expression, and then come back and see how you did. All right, the first thing I wanna do is find the total number of hours that Jane babysat. She babysat four on Saturday and three hours on Sunday. So I need to add four plus three. That will give me the total number of hours she babysat. Now I know that she makes $6 per hour. So I'm going to have to multiply that, the total number of hours she babysat by $6. I'm just going to put a six instead of the $6 there. So six times the sum of four and three. 
However, she also owes her mother $14. So we're going to need to take $14 away from how much she made. Now I'm going to solve this one. Normally when we write these expressions, we don't need to solve them, but I, I just wanted to show you how this works. So I put my stop sign in here above my subtraction sign and I circle my two terms and I bring my subtraction sign down. I can just bring the 14 down. Over here I need to add four plus three is seven and then I bring my six down. So now I have six times seven minus 14. Again, I still have that subtraction sign, so I need to circle my terms, bring my subtraction sign down, I can bring my 14 down, and then six times seven is 42. And then finally, I would subtract 14 from 42, and that would give me the total amount of money that Jane received for babysitting. Okay, now you're ready to try a few on your own. Good luck.